What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, The Crow Show, home of the smoothest voice on Twitch. In today's video, I'm just going to preface this by saying we're going to cover some very heavy topics. So a quick trigger warning for anybody concerned. Uh, I am going to be covering Coconut RTS's recent video where he talked about some heavy Catholic themes, including the apocalypse and existential dread. Um, a lot of really scary things, including some alarming, alarming conversation related to countries that are going through some, we'll just say, really rough things. I'm going to try to steer clear of some harsh words that may be a trigger for some people. Very heavy topic. Just like many people in the comments section of the video, I do have a level of concern for Coconut RTS. The video and the theme and the tone of it strikes me as somebody who needs help, somebody who is suffering a very low point. And that's human. I think that's very human. Going through really tough uh, challenges in life, you turn on the news for five minutes, I can see how one person who may have a vulnerable mind can draw of these different conclusions. We all know the algorithm will feed us whatever we want. If I start watching conspiracy theory videos, which I believe is what happened to Coconut, the algorithm is just going to continue to feed me conspiracy theory videos. And if you watch enough of them, they're very persuasive. And if your mind is vulnerable, it's going to be very easy to believe that. And that's why I don't think it's fair that some people are kind of memeing on coconut and poking fun and making jokes. I do believe the video is a cry for help. Coconut may agree or disagree, but I'm not the only one who feels this way. I really do hope that coconut finds love and peace and a more positive outlook on life in general. So I grabbed some clips uh, from the video and let's just break down a few of them and I'll be pausing throughout to reflect and just offer my two cents. I don't normally make videos like this, but I've been having an existential crisis. For some reason, it feels like... Okay, so I'm going to jump in right there. Existential crisis. A period of inner conflict during which a person is distraught over questions about identity, meaning, and purpose. So, Coconut fully admits that having an existential crisis and turned to Christianity to find some answers, to hopefully identify, find more meaning, more purpose. Now, the thing is, what Coconut discovered was fear and was driven to these things by fear. And as a result, focused on the fear aspect isn't always a great thing. The whole world is like crumbling around us. Imagine for a moment that the unimaginable happened. The United States has been infiltrated. I had a conversation with somebody. Oh, they work for a federal government agency that has to deal with our security of our nation. There are people and groups. So Coconut did link uh, to this video and a number of other videos he used throughout his video. Now this person talks about how he knows somebody who said that there are groups within the U.S. that are going to cause a lot of trouble and that you need to partner up with some people and get some emergency supplies and be ready. In place within the borders of the United States right now with plans to do some major or mass casualty type events, disruptive events. I don't know the timeline. I don't know the details. That's all I know that they are here now. and. The agencies, federal agencies are aware of that and working to thwart their plans. Hurricane Helen's destroying home. Okay, so this person uh, is, their, their content is based on fear. So here's the original YouTube video. This is not clickbait. Urgent news. Please watch and share. And the channel's called Survival on Purpose. You're going to notice at the very top here, a bunch of affiliate links, partnership links, uh, save 10% on orders. This person is preying on people like Coconut. Hoping that they'll click on these links, these affiliate links. And make money. 
this is content, you know, this is 295,000 views of people watching this nonsense. This man provides no evidence, provides no facts, cites zero sources, just feeding the minds of people who prescribe to wild conspiracy theories. And, and that's a really dangerous, really dangerous thing. Holmes, same with Milton. And oh, wow, look, the sun is shooting flares in the sky, causing the aurora borealis to be seen all over the globe. Because the stuff that I've been researching and seeing online has been giving me a bit of an ex existential crisis. Existential crisis, again, Coconut mentions that. Also, researching online. What makes Coconut qualified to do this? When I hear Christians talk about doing their own research, I think about a world event that started in 2020 and continues to this day of them doing their own research and putting a lot of us at danger. I don't trust these people to do their own research. <laughs> and we're going to get into that a little bit later as well. I've been starting to do some research into this type of topic of related to the end of the world coming from a book called the Holy Bible. So there's, uh, we'll just call it the culprit of Coconut's feelings uh, about the world right now. I spoke with somebody who um, is very spiritual, has a lot of experience with Christianity, uh, as well as other, other faiths. You know, this person has walked many, many paths I showed this person this video. I was like, what are your thoughts? And the person immediately said, you know, this person, this is, of course, opinion, and we don't want to be too judgmental, but this was just their early impression. They said, this person is coming uh, to religion as a result of fear when it should be out of love and happiness and peace. And uh, it seems like they're very fear-driven, which... I think is why people in the comments section are, are, are very concerned. Uh, we can see the fear on Coconut's face and hear it in his voice and the words he uses. It's very concerning. I read you an excerpt from the book of Revelation, and I've been spending time reading this book because this book... And the person I talked to before um, did mention the book of Revelation is something that's been hotly debated among religious groups uh, for quite some time. And there's some legitimacy issues there. I looked into it, I Googled it, and oh my gosh, there's so many different articles. Again, I'm not fully versed on these things. Just going by what I was told, I don't want to pass it off as, as truth, but just maybe some perspective. Is about faith hope and is part of the foundation for the country which i live in uh america but even though it is the cornerstone of the foundation of the country that i live in you cannot deny the fact of the chapter relating to the apocalypse the end of the world the earth passing away wars but pass afterward again getting into the apocalypse we're just approaching this fearing the worst and this is concerning you know this is somebody who is turning on the news and sees the end of the world coming and um, again i can see how that might be easy to do make those conclusions that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions Okay, so Co Coconut read this passage about young men seeing visions. And the smoking gun of evidence here is a couple of Facebook moms who put their iPhones in front of their small children who clearly have been coached to say certain things. The first little boy that we see um, speaks with uncertainty. And you can see in his eyes at one point he's kind of looking around, trying to remember what to say, what his mother told him to say. 
And I think that's really gross. I think to record these children saying these things, um, to coach them like this, to use this as, as proof to, to say that this, these young boys are prophets, they're seeing visions, that's really dangerous. Hi, Jojo. Hi. Uh, did anyone tell you to say this to everybody? Yeah. Who said? Jesus. The earthquake is going to break the house. The earthquake is going to break the house? Yeah. Oh, gee. Jesus is a shepherd. But the sheep. But the day. So you see there, the little boys kind of looking around. Looks very unsure. Um, I believe is trying to remember what to say. I'd be curious to see how many takes it took the, this person to record this bit. But this is this is scary. David will protect me. He's going to protect you. Yeah. Who told you that he's your shepherd? You don't sit on Sunday classes also. No. But even I will really like my Jesus. Okay. And Jesus is God powerful. Jesus is God powerful? Yep. Jesus is a heart. And Jesus heart. And he and do explosion. And, and then, then I hmm. wondered. Uh, yeah. It says faith over fear. It's really interesting uh, using these poor young boys to say these things that they've been coached uh, on what to say. Um, that's a concern. It's, this is why people are worried. I wondered what earth and hell was. To the eventual hell on earth. But what's the significance of the four horsemen? <clears throat> the four horsemen are four different colors. White. This is one of the parts of the video, which you, you may have seen footage for this already. But Coconut says the four colors of the four horsemen of the apocalypse sadly points out to the colors of Palestine flag. I'm sorry, but that's very... Coconut just outed himself as a Zionist. And that, that's hateful. To say that these people are bringing the apocalypse when they're victims of mass murder. We, we're seeing this every single day on the news. Instead, Coconut is taking this opportunity to point fingers at these people and isolate them even more and incite more hatred in their direction. That's not okay. Red, black, and pale. If you look up, the, does the colors of these four horsemen mean to us? I want to let you know before I show this next clip. Those four colors, by the way? Hey, Coconut, what, what are you wearing? Red, white, black, green. Are you one of the four horsemen, Coconut? Oh my gosh, we just put this all together. Coconut's the, one of the four horsemen. Mean us. I want to let you know before I show this next clip. The Holy Bible talks about Israel as God's people. And we're going to take everything in reference to that fundamental fact in the Holy Bible. Just so we're all aware, Israel is the country responsible for murdering innocent people and committing currently as we speak. Israel is the group of people that God talks about in the Bible. I wonder if God has successfully communicated something. So how could it be that a... So I did cut out quite a bit there, that, that gentleman who was shouting and being all prolific and amazing was the person who pointed out the four colors and um, basically just cast hatred to countries neighboring um, Israel. Book that was written over 3,500 years ago with over 40 different auth authors could predict the very colors of the flags of the countries turning against Israel they also predicted the colors of your, your hoodie. Red, black, green, white. Oh, 
Ooh, we found the smoking gun. It's you this whole time. No, it's not. I'm being silly. Because that's what this is. It's all silly. In the last days. And it just so happens that we're living it right now. We know Palestine. We know Afghanistan. We know Iraq. Are there any proofs that Israel is possibly God's people? Shalom, friends. I'm driving on my way to Jerusalem now. And someone... So this goofball told a story about rockets flying in the air and then being blocked and how some shrapnel hit. We'll just, I'm trying to word this as nicely as I can. Shrapnel hit. It only hit someone who is opposing Israel. And that is how they prove God is real and God is protecting his children just sent me this video check this and then the shrapnel falls directly on the iranian the only person killed by iran was the person that was fighting for iran and you can't make this up you can't make this you just did you just did you just have to see the wonder of god and the people that still say oh god he doesn't exist good luck oh well that's pretty damning. So Coconut's so smug in this, as if this is 100% real. <laughs> like, that's just, there's a smugness to this that just feels gross. Good luck. Oh, well, that's pretty damning. So what other things are in this book um, that have an eerie similarity to reality? Well, in Revelation 13, ear is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding account the number of the beast, for it- This is one of my favorite parts of the video. Um, Coconut basically says the, the number of the beast, 666, and has done some research and found a cryptocurrency that matches 666. It is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6, also known as 666 as a number that we are all familiar with to the devil. Um, growing up, this is just a very apparent symbol that we know about within our lives. Now, I did a bit of digging online to look for a patent named cryptocurrency system using body activity data. That's interesting. He went in way. Well, let's look at the patent identification number of this supposed technology. W O. Two zero two. This is Coconut's smoking gun for the presence of the devil. Six zero six zero six. Wild. Zero zero six zero six zero six a one. Wait a minute. Six zero six zero six. That's like six six six. And that's like in the Book of Revelation. That said. Now I'm going to show a clip here as well. Following this clip, it's from the movie Pi directed by Darren Aronofsky, I believe was his first film. And in it, they talk about when you obsess over a number, you're going to find that number everywhere you go. You're going to find it naturally. I'll just play it out for you. As there'll be a mark where you won't be able to buy or sell cryptocurrency, and they'll be having to be forced to put it on your hand or on your head. Well, you'd need to be putting it on your body for it to be able to read your body activity data. All this stuff can't just be a coincidence, right? There's one sign from the weather to political tension to war to solar storms, earthquakes, predicting the four colors that would turn on. It is a coincidence, uh, Coconut, and the following clip will show you why. Israel in the apocalypse and the unraveling of a technology which would doom people to hell if they were to take it. This is absolutely insane an order underlying every go game maybe that pattern is like the pattern in the stock market the torah this 216 the, number this, this, this is insanity max or maybe it's genius i have to get that oh, number hold on you have to slow down you're losing it you have to take a breath I mean, listen to yourself you're connecting a computer bug i had with a computer bug you might have had in some religious hogwash 
If you want to find the number 216 in the world, you will be able to find it everywhere. 216 steps from your street corner to your front door. 216 seconds you spend riding on the elevator. When your mind becomes obsessed with anything, you will filter everything else out and find that thing everywhere. 320, 450, 22, whatever. You've chosen 216 and you will find it everywhere in nature. But Max, as soon as you discard scientific rigor, you're no longer a mathematician. You're a numerologist. That is such a brilliant clip uh, because I remember the first time I saw Pi, my mind was blown. And I loved this particular sequence. And I put it to the test. I, I remember when I was a kid, I, I picked just some random number. I think it was like 24 or something like that. And sure enough, 24, I'd see 24 everywhere. I'd count how many steps it took to get me from my car in the driveway to, to inside the house. And it was 24 steps and <laughs> just silly things. I'm like, oh, we got... 24 eggs in the fridge. Oh, it's a sign. If you laser focus on a certain number, a specific number, if you become obsessed with it, you're going to find it naturally. And that is not proof. That is a coincidence. Now, I bring this up to you guys because everything that I've been reading in this book seems to miraculously be coming to pass. It seems like this book is a prophetic book outlining things that happened in the past. Again, just going with uh, the tone and nature of this video, uh, it, it feels like Coconut is deriving the worst aspects and the scariest aspects of the Bible. And that's all we're getting. There, there's no messages of, of love or positivity here. Even though I'm sure Coconut probably does prescribe to those things, why is none of that mentioned here? Are happening right now and will happen in the future. And I saw thrones and they that have come true from this book in the past and we see them coming to pass right now. I feel inclined to share this with you to warn you guys of our possible future. As before the great tribulation and Armageddon comes to pass, a lot of Christians believe in something called the rapture. You do our Lord. So yeah, uh, Coconut did show footage of somebody recreating or like interpreting what the rapture would look like. And that's just, it's alarming. Jesus Christ. I'm making this video to you guys out of love with the information that I know to present it to you guys so that you guys could make a decision whether you believe this or not. Where's the love? Where, where is the love? All it is, is conspiracy theories about the end of the world, us versus them, Israel versus Palestine. When real people are dying, generations of people are being wiped out, all in the name of this fucking book. Um, I personally believe everything in this book is true and all things in it will come to the pass, not just the good, but also the bad. And it seems that the only way to be saved is to have our faith in our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. So I love you guys. This is a little something different from what I normally post, but this has been weighing on my heart for a long time. So. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm going to be posting like more DBD stuff or more. I suggest sticking to DBD, uh, but maybe log off for a while. Maybe take a break from the internet. Unfollow those Facebook groups you're in that are only spreading fear. Because living in fear when you're, your mind is in a vulnerable state, it makes you susceptible to things like this. Everything we just watched, this was shaped by people who are chasing views, chasing clicks, chasing those partner and affiliate links. For this, but 
um probably a little bit more dvd stuff yeah um but yeah may god bless you guys and uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed it i was going to stop it there but i did see some clips on twitter and checked coconuts vod and saw something very alarming very scary some of you may be aware i'm bisexual it means i'm attracted to more than one gender so that makes me a part of the 2S LGBTQIA plus community. And that's what Coconut speaks about in this next clip. Peace. What's your opinion on queer people of faith? I believe that all can be saved um, through Christ. But when only when one believes in the blood atonement. I didn't know what blood atonement was when coconut said that blood atonement was a practice in the history of mormonism still adhered to by some fundamentalist splinter groups under which the atonement of jesus does not redeem an eternal sin to atone for an eternal sin the sinner should be killed in a way that allows his blood to be shed upon the ground as a sacrificial offering so what coconut is saying here is that queer people should die is there any other way to interpret this? Is that love or is that hate? Is that fear? This is the kind of crap that literally kills people throughout the entire world because they're queer. Along with a spiritual baptism in the name of, um, well, believing in Christ and the Holy Spirit, I think it's fine, but I presume- He thinks it's fine but he thinks these people should die. He thinks they should be killed. Should be killed. That allows their blood to be shed upon the ground as a sacrificial offering. It doesn't stop there though. Doomed to believe that that may not be as God designed. I, I respect people who deviate from the way that, that the God designed, but I would like to say that making decisions against the way that God designed seemingly leads to repercussions physiologically throughout our lives whether it be through cancer or like um some sort of weird um manifestation of physiological disease okay so where in the book or, or where does it say that if you're gay you're going to get cancer you're you're going to suffer these terrible diseases that is to me that's crazy talk that is dangerous and absolutely not okay it's actually really appalling and really disgusting and this is why i have issue with all of this here i actually wasn't going to say anything until i saw this clip and i said okay well i've got to put my my two cents in i do not condone any talk like this i i think it's gross and disgusting it just there's something that is spiritual that that fights with the, what's the flesh right like um and you see here this person up on the top stds so already through his influence because coconut i believe has 170,000 youtube sub subscribers and typically uh, a couple hundred concurrent twitch viewers when you have that level of influence, you can shape the minds of people. There's a reason why content creators are often referred to as influencers. And I think about that almost daily. Like the things that I say, I, I do stand behind them as much as possible. And I can't sit by and watch this nonsense go through this community. Whether we like it or not, Coconut is a part of the Dead by Daylight community. And this talk is dangerous. There's a lot of queer people in the DBD community. And I'm going to stand up for us. If the spirit is of God and the flesh is of sin, right? You kind of have two masters, right? I think that type of thing, that kind of tug and pull, um, might cause problems. But that's just think of it logically. If, if we kind of go against the way that humans are designed, there might be some sort of repercussions that I wouldn't know.
No, you don't know, Coconut. You're speaking nonsense. And my guess is Coconut is just drawing from one of the probably hundreds of conspiracy theory videos he's watched based on Christianity. And I've seen videos like that in the past where, you know, you see it on Twitter. Somebody's like, this is what happens if you're gay. You're going to get cancer. You're going to get this. You're going to get that. No, I don't think cancer <laughs> picks and chooses people who are queer and not queer. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to have to have a serious talk with my, my grandma, great grandmother <laughs> if we do get a chance to meet in the next world. Anyway, that I'll save that for another discussion. I just think this is very dangerous conversation to have simultaneously. I do believe Coconut is going through some serious um, mental health issues. I don't think it takes a professional to recognize that, but it definitely does take a professional to recognize that um, and acknowledge the kind of help that person needs. So I am going to leave a link in the video with various resources, uh, phone numbers, if you need help, if you're feeling any kind of dread, anything like an existential crisis, uh, maybe follow up on one of those phone numbers or emails. Uh, there is help out there. And uh, I do encourage Coconut. I hope you get the help you need. Um, and please be careful when you're spreading hatred about the queer community because there are so many of us out there and so many of us are in the DBD community. And when you say stuff like that, it spreads hate. It makes us feel less safe. That's not love. That's hate. There's no other way to put it. I'm just going to leave things there. I know it's a bit longer. I know it's way different from my other content, but I just couldn't stand by and let this go without chiming in because it directly affects me. I hope you tune in for the next video. If you like videos like this, where I sit here and chat about Dead by Daylight and the community, I think that's going to be the kind of content that I make while we figure things out here on YouTube. So thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.